So I already made a video like this in the past, but with an app that people in the comments reported that it's not available anymore. So here is an updated video. I love the app that I'm going to show you. It's called CapCut and it can do so much. I am not affiliated with them in any way, I just personally like the way this app works. It's a video editor that, among others, allows you to speed up and slow down your videos. It is a free app and, as of right now, there are no in-app purchases or watermarks or anything that would be off-putting. The link will be down below. In the CapCut app, you click on the blue plus icon to create a new project. Also make sure that you allow access to old photos and videos to the app because we of course want to import the footage for editing. Choose whatever video you have and want and it shows up on the timeline. While there are many effects below the timeline, make sure you have the clip selected because new options will show up when you do. And one of them, the second one, is speed. It asks you if you want normal or curve. Let's go with normal for now. We're currently at 1x by default and that's the original speed. The speed at which the video was shot. To speed it up, make sure to slide it to the right. 2x will double the speed of the video and so on. You also get a haptic feedback when scrolling through the speed multiples, so it's definitely nice. But the slider may appear like it's linear, but it isn't. Well, the distance between 1x and 2x is visually the same as between 2x and 5x. And from 10x above, on the short slide there, you get from 10 to 100. So this app effectively allows you to make your videos 100 times faster. And although this is the limit of the app, in some rare cases, if you ever needed more than 100x, you can export the video at 100x and import it back to the app and you start fresh again at 1x. And this clip may be edited to be faster again, I mean, you get my point. What's also useful is the duration information at the top. It informs you how long the video will end up being after your adjustment. Naturally, if the clip has twice the speed, then it also will be shorter by half. Once you are done, you click on the check mark icon and the video is faster now. You can of course export it by clicking on the icon in the upper right corner, but you may also want to remove the CapCut logo at the end of the timeline. It always shows up there by default, I mean you may also keep it there if you want to. Now we're moving on to slowing down. This part is a little bit tricky because it's much easier to speed up videos than to slow them down. I mean, technically it's very similar. The same steps as earlier, clicking on the speed and instead of sliding to the right, you go left. But the thing is that videos usually look good when they're faster and it's not the case with slow videos, which usually end up looking kind of weird if you slow them down. It all comes down to how many FPS, which stands for frames per second, the video was shot at. The more, the better. If you try to slow down a video that was 30 FPS originally, and you make it half the speed, so it's 0.5x, then it'll become just 15 FPS, which already to the human eye looks kinda choppy and not good. If you go further, it becomes even worse. But let's say that you record a video at 60 FPS. You can easily change it in your camera settings, so if you shoot a video like this, it is smoother and if you make it a 0.5x speed, it'll get from 60 FPS to 30 FPS and therefore the clip will be looking good. It'll be a regular watchable video. So whenever you have the possibility and you know that you're about to slow the video down in the future, make sure to actually set it to more FPS in the, the settings because it will definitely make things a lot smoother no matter which app or video editor you use. It just always makes it look better. In a CapCut, there's also this better quality enhancing feature, which in theory makes the video look better when slowed down. I wouldn't necessarily rely on it. It takes time for the app to process it and it will never replicate the result of more frames per second. You can play around with it, but adjust the frame rate before shooting if you know you want to slow the video down later. But I mean, this feature, the better quality stuff, definitely adds quality back to the video because it. I believe that it blends the frames together and it effectively creates 
new frames in between and making the video look smooth again. It's definitely better than nothing, but like I said, I would not rely on it and consider this like to be the main option. And there is also the curve option. So far, we've talked about linear speed adjustments. Whether we were speeding things up or slowing the video down, we only made it linear. The other option is curve, and this gives you more control over your clip. It's a bit more advanced, so maybe not for everyone. Now, if you click on a speed, it asks for normal or curve, so click on a curve, and there are some prepared, like preset options, but choose custom and click on it again to edit it. This will give you option to speed a certain part of the video up, keep the rest as it, as it is, or simply play with it and see the result for yourself. It's possible to add points on the curve or even remove uh, the existing ones, depending on what your end goal is. This applies to slowing and speeding video up as well, so make sure to play around with it. You have a little more tools, of course, with this curve, but yeah, I believe that for regular usage, the linear normal speeding up and slowing down is going to be enough for most people. Anyways, hope the video helped you out. CapCut is my go-to video editing app on mobile. On MacBook, I use Premiere Pro because that, that's definitely better. But for some light edits and especially on the go, it's definitely good to use uh, something like this on uh, the iPhone, especially the fact that it's available on the iPhone. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching and see you guys later in uh, the future.